steep or shallow? That is the question. Which is the fastest and does one gradient take more or less battery than the other? Does the longer route take more time and also more battery because of the distance or does the more direct approach take a shorter amount of time but nevertheless more battery because more power is needed? So, hard or easy, steep or shallow? Well, we're about to find out. Now, the direct approach, which is in the hill behind me, is 296 meters from A to B and 102 meters vertical gain. The alternative route is 1.3 kilometers and still 106 meters vertical gain. Okay, so I'm at the start of uh, Route A, the direct route. It's actually an incredibly short distance. The contours are packed in together. Now, I'm gonna be doing both these runs on my Canyon Spectralon in boost mode, naturally. It's got a 12-speed cassette on the back, and I'm guessing I'm gonna be using only the top two. Whoa. Even off the start, it's quite a gradient we're working on here. I'm now in, oh my God, I'm in second gear. So I've only got one gear, easy to go. Oh my God, look how steep that is. Okay, I'm now in the easiest gear. Oh hell, that, that's <laughs> steep. Oh. Techie. Oh, there it goes again. There it goes again. Am I gonna make it up there? No. So, push. Stop. Again. Keep the momentum. God, this is hard. At this point in my very brief yet painful ascent, I'd just like to point out we've often got into a lot of bother here on EMBN when it comes to hill climbing. Well, I have at least. See, I've upset a few filmers by going off piste and off the charts. I mean, when does a hill climb become a full-on expedition? I'm thinking such features as Into the Wild with Hannah Barnes, Adam Brayton in the Lake District, the Tour of Mont Blanc, and of course, The Rock. I mean, how steep is too steep? Direct is all very well and good, but it's knowing just what is rideable is the difficulty. Now this trail, on camera at least, looks incredibly easy, but the gradient, I can assure you, is severe. Now imagine if you throw some loose rocks into the mix and then it becomes almost like a hike. And we all know that whilst hauling mountain bikes on your back is one thing, e-mountain bikes are another thing altogether. Oh my God. So, pull the summit at 102 meters. Ah, oh, that's me. Route B is the easy way or the shallow way and we'll certainly be tiptoeing up through those contour lines as opposed to the first run where we were marching up a ridiculous gradient. As you can see, the surface is quite different as well to the first run, which was single track. So what I'm aiming to do is keep that momentum up to uh, beat that first run time. Still gonna be physical, I can tell you. Okay, so here we go. 1.3 kilometers of prime fire track. Conditions pretty good. Oh, no barrier. Okay. The effort level, 
still pretty high, I can tell you. Slight headwind, so you need to factor that in. Speed, around about 23, 24 kilometers an hour. Okay, so now crossing the contours a little bit more for the last 50 meters, I can actually see the end. Still brutal, still brutal. And here we are. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, wow, that wasn't very pleasant. Oh, crikey. Both were equally, equally difficult. Um, so I guess it depends uh, whether you're in the rush or not, but um, I think it's time to go and have a look at the data from shallow or steep. So after a short bout of interval training, I've had a refresh and it's time to look at the times. Now the direct route, two minutes, 59 seconds and 31. Uh, heart rate, uh, 133 average and a maximum heart rate of 160, which, you, which shows just how punishing that climb was. And remember, during the climb, I did have to get off at one stage because it was simply too technical. Uh, a few bit of rocks on a, one particular section there. Now the indirect route, three minutes, 57.12, almost a minute slower than the direct route. But the heart rate, 129 average and 142 maximum, which is you know quite significantly lower than on the steep route. Now, the really interesting fact is the battery consumption. Now the direct route, 34 watt hours, indirect route, 44 watt hours. And this is actually quite surprising, but if you think about it, if you think about the extreme, so if you took say a 100 kilometers to get to the top of the hill, then obviously you would definitely run out of battery. So um, I think it's all to do with rolling resistance and the, and the sheer distance involved to get to the top of the hill. Uh, but one thing's for sure is that uh, the direct route, you certainly wouldn't be able to ride up that hill in eco mode, whereas you could potentially do that on the indirect route. So loads to think about here, and uh, really quite interesting uh, numbers, I think. And uh, obviously the, 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 the hill you climb depends on the technicality, whether you can climb it or not, because you know it's certainly no fun trying to get up a super technical climb, uh, trying to carry your e-mountain bike. Uh, so yeah, uh, let us know what you think about uh, this video. Uh, what are your what your experiences are with uh, climbing on your e-mountain bike? Don't forget to follow us on social media, and uh, we'll see you on the hill next time.